Thanks for tuning in to Me and My Golf. We're your coaches, Piers and Andy. And welcome to the Ultimate Golf, where we recently had the opportunity to spend time with four of the best golfers in the world to help build the ultimate golfer. Yes, and we're gonna share with you exactly what makes them great. Week one is driving, and we've got one of the longest, straightest hitters in the world right now, John Rahm. So we're gonna find out exactly what makes him the ultimate driver. Now don't forget, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you have any questions whatsoever about this video, post them down below. And also, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, especially if you wanna see the rest of the ultimate golfer. Let's take charge of your game. Here we are in Florida, a tailor-made M5 and M6 launch. We've got a special guest, John Rahm. Thank you so much, John. Great for to joining see you. us. Thanks my for joining pleasure. us. Yeah, of course, my pleasure. It's been brilliant, it's brilliant seeing you. Now, it's it's been a, an interesting two years for you, hasn't it? We first saw you win your first tournament. We mm -hmm. actually interviewed you after that. But yes, the two years since have been phenomenal for you. Can you how do you sum it up in thirty seconds? I can't <laughs> complain. Uh, I think the one content constant in my game is what I have in my hand right now. Right, it was my driving uh, last year. I was second strength strokes gain on the tee this year. I think I was around third. Uh, so, you know, when you consistently hit any good off a tee, it's, you know, that means you're setting yourself up for, for shorter shots into the green and, you know, most likely in the fairway. So, you know, it's, uh, it's easy to be consistent that way. Okay. Uh, when you're always hitting a good off a tee, so you can always kind of maneuver your irons and maybe save a couple of putts. Uh, if you're not hitting a good off a tee, it's, you know, it's going to be kind of rough to get the score going. Yeah. It's, it's, been, it's been very impressive for us to watch, hasn't it? We've actually, I think we're a little bit of a lucky charm as well. We've actually been there, we've watched you when you first won, we watched you in Dubai last year, we spoke to you at Grand Del Mar with, with uh, Sean Cox and then you went mm. and won, so you know what? I think he needs us everywhere I he goes. I think we just, he just takes us everywhere. Yeah, he no, I mean, I, 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 I would agree. <laughs> uh, we need to be at the Masters with, that's what we need to do. Just come up to the Majors. There we go, Just Perfect. come up to the Majors. <laughs> we're there, we're there. Okay, so look, we're talking ultimate driver. Yeah. And as you said, you've worked second in strokes gained last year, third I think this year. It, your driving, your total driving is phenomenal. And we want to sort of talk a little bit about that because it's such a powerful weapon, isn't it, Andy, for a golfer? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, and the good thing about John is he's long and he's straight, which mm. is a hard combination to get to. So we'd love to see you hit some shots. Yeah. Take oh, a yeah. look at some numbers and just take a, maybe get a, a delve into your mind about what you've done that's enabled you to, to just hit it long and straight. Yeah, uh, I mean, if we're talking, I think the first thing that you need to look at is, I mean, I do have a specific swing that I've built and I've been able to learn how to hit the ball like that, right? I mean, having the boat wrist, much like DJ, allows me to swing my body as hard as I can and never yeah. be scared of that ball going left. Yeah. So it freezes up a lot. You know, we know we can aim left and that ball's going to fade and just get as much body speed as we can. And, you know, that's how we get the consistency. Then having a little bit shorter swing, you know, my, my girlfriend, my fiance, kind of compared it to Andy Roddick's swing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or not swing, Andy Roddick's serve. Yeah, like, yeah. it's so yeah. short and fast yeah, yeah. that not much can go wrong. Yeah. yeah. So, like, it's just so short and quick that you know, it's kind of hard to go off plane, it's kind of hard to go off balance, I like keep it together and that's why it makes me consistent. You know? I think that's the good combination that we see. We see a strong face and a short golf swing. Where you look at amateurs, they have a long swing and an open face, which is a recipe for disaster. So there's certain <laughs> yeah. elements that we love and we talk about John swing a lot here to some of our guys and the, the viewers at home. If they could have a slightly stronger club face, yeah, yeah. it enables them to go hard with the body without 100%. any fear of it, like as you mentioned, John, going left. Well, you, yeah. you look at you look at as soon as the swing goes long and we bend the wrist that way, cup it a little bit too much, you know, it's gonna be a lot of a, a lot of catch up is required. It's hard to man yeah, it's a lot of manipulation to get yeah. that face square back yeah. into place. So it's uh, it's a lot going on. Okay. So we let's, watch you? Yeah let's let's watch you hit a couple and just yeah, talk us through how you would set up and what goes through your mind when you're playing a shot. We've got a drivable par four here which I'm sure we can get it on there. Well I'm gonna start saying because everybody asks me you know when I hit it hard and all and all these swings. I think obviously all pros have different gears. I'm not always swinging hundred percent, although I like to a lot of times. Not always. You know, I'm not always gonna go hit it as hard as I can possibly hit it. But what I like doing, so if I'm trying to hit it at the pin over there, the easiest way for me to do it is I kind of set up square at it, right? And then I take a little bit of a step to the left. And I already know I'm aiming left of the pin. Yeah. All I need to do is be free and that ball's gonna start left and fade. So that's that's the only that's a, pretty much the only thought. And besides that, the only thing I would ever think is on the back swing, I like to feel like I'm loading my right side. Yeah. A lot of people get stuck 
mm -hmm. in here and kind of try to get it up going this way and that's when the dispersion starts. Yeah. I like to load the right side and then get my body going as fast as possible and have the ball start left and, and fade. So if I were to hit it there, let's see. Oh, give me a couple of warm up yeah, balls. Okay, that's not good. But fading. I think, I think what we see, Pierce, as well with John, and we talked about this off camera yesterday, is that yes, he's a powerful hitter, but he sets himself up ex you know, extremely well from how he positions his body and how he loads into that backswing. He gets really behind it with his spine angle, and that really sets himself up to get the most out of these drives. As we, we always talk Absolutely. about that. I think the other, another thing I always come, come, I like comment on, I like to be hitting the ball probably in a plus two attack angle. Yep. Yep. I mean, I know that one was a little bit, I'm a little cold, but when I get warm, I'm hitting up on it. Plus yeah. one, plus two, plus three if I'm really trying to carry something. Yeah. Just because you get a high launch, very low spin, so the ball's kind of going to get straight. It's yeah. never going left. Mm -hmm. I know that much, because if I'm trying to hit it high, I cannot turn the face hard enough to go left. Yeah. yeah. So I know it's just going to fade, and if it starts left, it's more likely going to go in far away. Yeah. And that yeah. one there, as you said, that one was left, but then fading back. So it's... Yeah, you know, it's, it's always it's trying to get back. Yeah. See, let me... But see, now that I know I started that way, if I just try to hit a high up on it, you yeah. won't start that far left. Okay. There you go. Oh, right, that's it. And that was a high launch. And give us a few it. minutes, it might come down. <laughs> and let's, I mean, let's take a look at the numbers there on that go. as well there, Pitch on the green, no problem. That was past the green. <laughs> so we've got attack angle 1.1, uh, carry 307 yards, uh, club speed 180, 118, ball speed 175. So again, path slightly left, he's like, you know, likes to play that fade and Opening himself out there, Pierce, as well. We like that because it mm. enables him again to go harder. Yeah. There's three, many, three shot warm up as well. I like to be efficient. You know, I mean, I could swing harder, I could get the ball speed higher, but it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to get, you know, a high smash factor and have the ball going far. I can, you know, I can maximize the distance I get from a 175 ball speed consistently. Now, if I need to go harder, I can, but it's, you know, it's a pretty consistent ball flight yeah. that carries over 300 yards. You I can mean, do that consistently, that's why yeah. you're. Uh, so in the top three. I suppose the one question I've always wanted to ask John, and we've spoke to you a few times, but I've never had a chance to ask you this. Because some people technically would say that the, the lead wrist position is and the face is shut and what, however we want to term that. Has anyone ever told you as a coach ever said, look, we need to change that because it's not yeah. technically correct? Oh. My, my, I started working with the swing coach that kind of created my swing about 10 years ago. Okay. And th there was people on the national team that tried to have me have a perfect plane and a parallel club. Yeah. Now, that was before TPI really kicked in. I'm yeah. not physically able to do that. Yeah. Okay. My body can't do that. I don't have the back flexibility to get that far back there and be comfortable. I was, you know, I was doing a lot of movement that wasn't mm -hmm. comfortable for me. So I always stick to the short swing. Yeah, yeah. And and it's worked out. I mean, it's just, you know, each one has different swings. Each player has different hand-eye coordination skills. And you know, you see shots and you see the path differently. Yeah, yeah. In my mind, I'm making a full swing. Mm -hmm. I really am not, but if I'm able to hit it just as far, there's no need to go any farther. It's back. your full swing, though, isn't it? Yeah. And that's the key, isn't it? It's actually your full swing. Yeah, and I, th I think I what I like about that is, again, for the guys at home, if they're watching people like DJ and trying to copy DJ, mm -hmm. well, look, their body cannot do what DJ it's a freak can do. Of nature, that's just our... So you've got to be able to work within your limits, and certainly you you understand what you're capable yeah. of doing, and you work with those to get the most out of it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's, I think that's the best thing. Just knowing your limits and try to maximize your capabilities based on your limits. Yeah. Love it, love it. Let's just change up a little bit here. I'm going to go through some scenarios, yeah? Okay. So let's go through some, some, for some scenarios. Now, the one shot I know that I'll, you do like hitting is a low driver, like a maybe Portrush 2019 Open, low drivers, getting out mm. there, pitching around about 190. Irish but Open. 300, there we go, of course, yes, of course. <laughs> hit one for us, what do you do? How it do you all do depends, it? okay, if I'm trying to hit it really, really low for show, yeah. I'll actually tee it up high okay. and get the ball going at a negative angle. Yeah. But if I'm doing something that, that stays in, in plane, I'll tee it up pretty low. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'll try to keep it closer to the center of the face. And I don't change much. Okay. I have the same routine, I still aim left, and, and it's for sure going to fade. Yeah. Now, and actually what I like to feel is try to feel that I'm still hitting up on the ball. Okay. Um, it's hard to do because it's so low, but mm -hmm. it will come out low with a pretty nice, you know, kind of launch angle looking kind of shot. So still be low, but travel, you know, travel through the wind. Wind's and, not touching it. Yeah, exactly. If you hit down on it, you're going to add spin on the ball. It's going to go sideways very quick. So, I, you know, all I do is trying to start on the path that I'm aiming at and just have a fade from there. Okay. Let's see it happen. So it won't change much. I mean, I might pull the ball farther back on my stance to facilitate the swing. But the idea is all the same. 
that's so nice. Very nice. Yeah, that's, you say that's low, a, peeling yeah. out to the right. I think one of the things that John's able to do, Pierce, which, which is that a tricky point, thing for you're not trying to hit it hard. This is get the mm -hmm. ball low. John's able to maybe still feel like he hits up, but he be, he's able to create that shaft lean, which de lofts the, the club, which is crucial on that shot, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah, it's just all I feel is that I'm not releasing it as much. Yeah. I don't have time to release it because the, the tee is a little lower, so it just it just comes out like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because of my swing, I think being European, yeah, yeah. I have no problem hitting the ball low. That is not a problem. My Perfect. problem for the most most of my career is getting it up in the air. So, so should we do one more? One more scenario. One more. Okay. Now so, we know he's going to hit the 18th at Augusta. But it's just perfect for you. You know, we know you're going to do that. I've hit yeah. this shot before. I got the 18th at Augusta. There we go. So what, <laughs> if it's wind, it's perfect. It goes right through the trees, and it's not going to move. So let's get let's go 13th hole, Augusta. Ooh. You got to hit a high draw around the corner. You got to get it going around there. <laughs> what yeah. do you do? Uh, you know, I do something I don't recommend many people to do. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have a pretty weak grip. Yeah. Weak grip. I strengthen it a little bit. Okay. It's a do or die situation for me. I yeah, mean, yeah. And then I tee it up really, really high and swing as about as hard as I can. Wow. Just Love to it. compensate from that stronger grip. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, I'm really looking forward to like a very, 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 very straight ball flight. But in the case I'm turning it a little bit, it still goes high and it might carry the first few trees. Okay. I can't hit that ball flight like Rory McIlroy does. Mm -hmm but I can try to get it as close as possible. And if I'm hitting it hard, even if it goes towards the edge of the right trees, if it goes far enough, you still kind of go through to the fairway and have yeah. a pretty nice angle. So, you know, it's kind of what I'm looking for. And surprisingly, I've had pretty good success with that tee box. So, good. <laughs> yeah. Let's see then. Let's, Let's see, see that shot. So, slightly yeah, so the idea, grip. I will aim a little bit farther right. Well, maybe a little bit right of the target. Strengthen my grip. We okay on track man there, Andy? We good, yeah, sorry? Yeah, we good. We good, yeah, we good. We good yeah. there, okay. We're good. I don't recommend anything then. <laughs> and then, the swing will probably be the same. Just still hit up on it and let the grip do the work. Yeah. High. Nice. A little draw. That was pretty bad. Was it toey? It was just a little high on the face. It, it went straight. It was interesting there, though, some of the numbers we've got. It's warming up now, Pierce. We've got an attack angle of three plus, mm. club speed 120, ball speed 178, 310 carry. All so right. he's getting there. He's getting yeah, I know that was. I still feel like I'm gonna hit yeah. the back, so <laughs> I need to. You're safe. I'll aim a little straighter. I know I, I am safe, but it's just it's just to it's my head. It's different, isn't it? Yeah. To my head. <laughs> I'm not used to hitting anything with anything behind me. So yeah, I kind of go more towards what you guys would call neutral, which seems like it's <laughs> the strongest feeling for me. <laughs> there it is. Oh, it is drawing, I mean. Yeah, well, it's, that's, I mean, for me. Possibly get around the corner, that one. But yeah, absolutely. A little too low. Oh, he's still. going 122 club speed now. Hang on a bit, we're meant to be doing this challenge in a minute. What challenge? I don't it's, know. It's got, I think we should, we should call it. Oh, you want me to go harder on one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so is, is there any other, um, would you ever go harder? On I shot? Is there, what's the circumstance there? I'm not swinging as hard it? as I can right now. I, I would go harder. Okay. I would swing harder just to avoid what I just did, a little lower okay. draw. Okay. I'm trying, I need to get comfortable with this. I'm gonna do, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do this right now. I want to see, I'm going to see exactly what you got. Let's move these back a little. Okay. Let's give it the full kitchen sink. Andy, you do realize we're just getting him warmed up for our challenge. I don't know whether it's just a good idea, Pierce, happen. now. It's getting uh, less and less <laughs> of a good idea. All right. if, I, if I hit it good, I'll get it to 124. 124, yeah? Yeah. I actually did it earlier today, so. Okay. That's pretty good. What's the speed on that, Andy? A bit more like that, yeah. <laughs> Tell me, 123.3, oh, is 123.3, 182.3 ball speed. There we go. It's pretty decent. It's, it's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> pretty good. I'd say, I mean, I know I can swing that hard, but I don't usually do it, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. I okay. try to just go with a little fade, I mean, and a good day, once I warmed up, I'll get to almost 180 ball speed, which is still really, really good. Yeah, that's really good. It's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, with all these other tailor-made guys, you've got to be there, haven't you? <laughs> they well, all I mean, it, don't they? I think I averaged 77 or 78, but again, I maximize my distance. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, it doesn't come up with much spin. It's fading, and then it might roll a little bit. So, Brilliant, brilliant, superb. John, thanks for your time. Oh, really no good luck for next season. Look, we you. think that you are going to be one, a world number one soon. So uh, maybe Hopefully. even a Masters champion. And major, major champion. I think major Masters champion. is probably the one. We just need to be there. We just need to go. We're there in April. We're there. So look, um, sorry I'll take that away from Andy. <laughs> right, we're going to do a, uh, a giveaway, okay? So mm. for a chance to win three dozen of John Rahm's golf balls. He doesn't know yet. We're probably going to steal him out of his golf bag. Um, where was the first tournament on the PGA Tour that John won? So we interviewed him afterwards. We watched it happen live. Where was that course? 
post it down below. Yes, hit the thumbs up if you enjoyed that and you want to see more videos like this and comment down below and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. We really hope you enjoyed that. We absolutely love doing that. And now make sure you don't miss out. Click on the previous video to see last week's Ultimate Golfer. Yes, now if you're somebody who's looking to break 90, then we have the perfect solution. We've created a six week coaching plan where myself and Pierce personally guide you week by week to help you break 90. Now to go and check out part one or week one, should I say, click the link in the corner and we will see you over there.